Welcome to Papa's Workshop. You know school is going to be starting soon and you need to be able to have all of the school supplies, shoes, uniforms, everything in one place. Well, I'm making today a back to school station to keep you and the kids organized. So let's get started. With the school beginning very shortly in most areas, I decided to be able to make a central place to be able to have all of the kids' supplies, whether it's their shoes, their backpacks, uh, their clothes for the school uniforms, everything that they need all in one place. And we've done several different sketches between my wife and I, and what this is the, the design that we have come up with. We're going to make this cabinet 24 inches wide with two drawers and then a shelf right here for the shoes to be able to sit on. We're also going to put a magnetic strip up on top to be able to put in notes and different things that need to come to and from the school. We'll also have a hook here for jackets for this fall and winter when it gets cold. And of course on the outside we'll have a hook for their backpacks. So this is going to be a very simple, easy build cabinet that I'm going to do today to be able to keep all of the kids' supplies in one place and hopefully make it a lot easier for mom and dad to get the kids ready for school each morning. So again, this is going to be 24 inches wide, 19 inches deep, and it's going to be 40 inches tall. So this is the basic design that I'm going to be working with. To be able to get started, I'm going to take this partial sheet of plywood and I'm going to make my first cut the 40 inches. That's going to give me the overall height that I need for this project. Now this plywood is wide enough so that I'll be able to get both the left and right side out of this one section. This panel saw makes it really easy to be able to maneuver the heavy sheet of plywood, something that I have a difficult time doing. And by being able to use this, I'm able to be able to cut it and then I can much easier to be able to handle the individual smaller pieces. Because this cabinet is not square like a typical cabinet, it's important to be able to go ahead and lay out both the left and the right halves. Now this way it ensures that both the left and right are exactly the same and that I have all the measurements and I can verify everything before making that first cut. The other part of this design is where this cabinet narrows as it goes up where it will hold the coats and the backpack. I don't want sharp corners so for that reason I'm using the one quart paint cans to be able to create the radius. And again, I'm doing that both on the left and the right. And then at the top, I'm going to use a smaller radius to be able to do the round over for the top of this cabinet. I find that the paint cans, and in this case the spray cans, work extremely well for this. It gives a very simple and a very accurate way to be able to create the radius. Before I take this over to the table saw, I want to try to give a close up. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see the lines, but at any rate, all of the layout lines are in place and I have both the left and the right laid out. So now, it's off to the table saw. I set the table saw for the 19 inches. That way I'll be able to cut the two halves into its two separate pieces. And again, it makes it a little bit easier to be able to manage. The other thing, because it's the 19 inches wide, that gives a nice straight edge on that bottom portion of the cabinet. So that gives me now my rectangle for my left and the right, cut down to the 19 inches by the 40 inches tall. For this next section, I have to set the fence for the 10 inches, and this is going to cut the top portion of this cabinet. And I'm not going to be able to rip it all the way down, 
but I'm going to be able to rip it down far enough so that I can go ahead and finish it up with the jigsaw. I want to be able to have nice long straight lines as much as I can with the table saw itself. Now the rest of the cutout will be done with the jigsaw. And of course the first thing I'm just going to do this little radius at the very top of the cabinet and then I'll be able to continue right on down through the rest of it. Having this separation between the table saw and the workbench actually has a very good purpose. It allows me to support the entire length of the project and still be able to cut it out with the jigsaw. Using the jigsaw in this manner to be able to cut out the rest of this cabinet actually goes very, very easily. And there's very little work left to be done on the sander itself. Once I make this final turn on this radius, then it's just a matter of cutting it right into the saw cut from the table saw. And that completes what I need to be able to do with the jigsaw itself. Now let's head over to the oscillating sander and we'll clean up the edges. One of the things that I want to point out, when I'm cutting out this with a jigsaw, you want to make sure that you leave just a little bit of the line so that when you bring it over to the sander, you can actually sand right up to the line. That gives a very clean, very crisp and sharp uh, lines for the cabinet. Because I took my time in laying it out and drawing everything first, it makes it where by sanding directly up to these lines, it makes where both the left and the right pieces are identical. One step that I could have taken, I could have actually taped these two pieces together and sanded them at the same time. But I really didn't need to do that, but that is a alternative solution to be able to sand to make sure that both the left and right sides are exactly the same. One thing I didn't notice is that this plywood actually had a huge gouge in it. It almost looked like the blade of a forklift had just dug into this plywood. So to be able to fix that, I'm just going to mix some of, of the tight bond glue with the sawdust, blend it in, and work it into those areas. Now I want to be able to have this a little bit proud so that I can actually have it filled in completely and then sand it down smooth. Now this cabinet is going to be painted so this works extremely well and it will make for a perfectly smooth surface. This was actually a lot worse than I had thought. And if I had seen that ahead of time, I would have used a different portion of the plywood for this project. But because I'd already had it cut out, knowing that it was going to be painted, this is a good alternative and it's a good means for you guys to be able to see how you can patch it, mixing the glue and the sawdust, working it down into the tear out and then scraping it flat. Now in this case, I'm using an old credit card but there's a many different uh, alternatives that you can use. Once the glue is dry, then you can go ahead and sand this smooth and it will be as if that tear out was never there. So this is a real good way to be able to patch a big tear out in your plywood and be able to continue on with the project in a very short period of time. The glue takes about roughly about 30 minutes to be able to dry and you can go ahead and sand it. It's time to be able to cut the top and to be able to do that the first thing you always want to do is square that first edge before you measure and cut the final length. This ensures that your cabinet will be square as you assemble it. So at this point I'm ready to be able to go ahead and take the final measurement, mark it, and be able to cut that. For those of you who have been watching my channel for a while and saw the table saw sled being made along with my dust cover, I wanted you to be able to see this in action. This is working very, very well. It captures probably 99% of the dust. So I'm very pleased with how this is working. You'll also notice that the hose itself, I've attached a string to the ceiling so that it supports the hose and there's very little weight that's on the dust cover itself. The final step of the cutout 
is to be able to take this piece of plywood, which is cut to length, and cut the additional strips of wood that I need. I decided to use the pocket hole system to attach this cabinet. It's very quick and it's very accurate to be able to do this. Now I'm using a pocket hole jig with the vacuum attached to my central vacuum system and this it works out really really good. It's nice having that vacuum drop right there at the workbench to be able to attach any of the various attachments that I need to it. It helps to keep the dust out of the shop as much as possible. I really like this Armor Tool uh, pocket hole jig. It works extremely well and with the vacuum attachment on it, it really pulls all of the sawdust out and it's very, very effective. I'll put a link above to be able to show you where I reviewed this pocket hole jig. Now it's time to assemble everything, and with all my layout lines in place, it really goes very quickly. Now, because this is three quarter inch plywood, the pocket hole screws that I'm using are an inch and a quarter long. To assemble this, I'm using a different drill. You might have noticed I'm not using the quarter cable drill that I normally use. I'm using this drill that the manufacturer has sent to me to test. And in an upcoming video, I'm going to do a review on this. But so far, I really like this drill. One thing I want to point out, these strips that I'm putting on at the back of the cabinet are not flush with the back of the cabinet. It's actually recessed back a quarter of an inch. The reason being is that I'm going to be attaching a quarter inch piece of plywood to the back of this cabinet. With that cabinet assembled, I took the final measurements of exactly the size that I need for the plywood. And I went ahead and marked it on the plywood itself, slide the fence in place, and then ripped it. That way, there's really no tape measure involved because it gives me an accurate information right where I need to cut it because I measured off of the project itself. A quick test fit, and you can see that that fits in there perfect. So all I need to do now is just go ahead and nail that in place. For the top itself, I'm attaching a three quarter inch by half inch piece of wood to be able to do two things. One, cover up the plywood edge. And secondly, I'm going to go ahead and put a 45 degree chamfer on this to be able to have a more pleasing look and to make it look like it's solid wood. I'm using the trim router with a 45 degree chamfer bit in it to be able to put this edge on the front of this uh, top. After that, I'm just going to grab a piece of sandpaper and lightly sand it, and this part will be done. It takes very little sanding to be able to get it smooth and to make it look just as if it was a solid piece of wood. Now to be able to hide the edges of the plywood on the remaining of this project, I'm using an iron-on uh, birch veneer to be able to cover up these edges. And to be able to do this, you just use a little iron to be able to activate the glue and just rub it right on. Now I'm taking a dowel rod and I'm going to be able to just roll that along there to apply the pressure to be able to make sure that it sticks very good. One thing that I really like about this product is when it comes to ironing on this material on the radius, it works extremely well. You do the exact same process. You just heat the material, press it down, and hold it where it needs to be. And again, I'm using that dowel rod to be able to put the extra pressure on it. And that glue adheres to the plywood extremely well. And you can just continue on with the process. Once you have everything on and glued, then you can just come back with the sandpaper and be able to smooth it, sand it, and it looks great. This is a real easy process to be able to do, and it's something that I would highly recommend. If you have plywood, cover those edges, and it really looks good. It's time to attach the drawer slides. Now this has to be measured back 1 16th of an inch from that back edge. The other thing you have to ensure is that it's nice and straight. So I'm using the T-square, I'm marking it line exactly where it needs to be to be able to give the proper alignment. And from there, it's just a matter of screwing it into position. 
Now this tool is perfect for this. This is actually made to seal the edges of the wallpaper, but it also works real well to be able to put the necessary pressure when you're putting on that birch veneer. This works a whole lot better than that dowel rod that I used earlier. Now this is the drawer face that I'm doing right now. I've already cut it to length and the width, and it's time just to be able to cover up the plywood edges. The nice thing about this, I just went ahead and set this up in the vise, and I cut the um, strips to length, and then I can glue them on. Using this roller, so much easier. I'm glad that I remembered that I had this. I haven't used this in many years. And again, once all of the edging is on, I just take the sandpaper and I sand the edges down and to be able to make it completely flush with the plywood itself. And it looks great, guys. It really does. I would tell you, looking at this in the camera really doesn't do the justification uh, from being able to see it in person. I'm going to try to get this up close in the camera so that you can see it. But to be honest with you, the camera just doesn't do justice uh, and show you the true look of what it looks like because it looks like a piece of solid wood. I went ahead and assembled the drawers and I made the drawer exactly the way that I've done in the other videos so I didn't want to waste the time showing you this again. I'll put a link up above and in the description below where I have done the drawers in the past. But at this point I'm attaching the other part of the drawer slides and yes I have to be able to bring back the, my old memories and be able to use the Yankee screwdriver to be able to put this on as I have done for many years. I really do find that this is the best tool for the job. I think it works better than the drill and it's faster than a regular screwdriver. I guess some things just never going to change. I don't know what I'm going to do if this screwdriver ever wears out. I'm not ready to be able to change how I do this. I want to be able to attach the face of the drawer to the drawer itself now. And to be able to do this, I start out by drilling a hole for the knob itself. Now in this case, I'm using a single knob that's going to be in the center of the drawer. I do this because I actually use this to hold the face onto the drawer while I'm finishing the attachment. This is a little bit different than what most people do. I don't believe in using a double stick tape and the other method that I've seen other people do over time. First thing I want to point out is that the face of this drawer is smaller. Yes, I ran out of plywood and didn't want to stop. Now what I'm doing right now is laying out where the screws are going to be mounted to hold the face of the drawer. Now I don't use a tape measure. I find just a scrap block works perfectly fine. It gives me perfect alignment so that all four screws are in exactly the same place. And it only takes a moment to be able to do this. I can actually pre-drill these holes and set the screws up in position. Now I'm going to go ahead and put all four screws in place. I'm screwing them in about halfway through the plywood. This makes attaching the face of the drawer front very, very easily to be able to, to do. I put the drawer into the cabinet. I put the face onto the front of the drawer. And then I'm using coins, in this case nickels, to be able to put the spacing that I need. And I'm looking left and right, top and bottom, to make sure that the space is exactly where it needs to be, and then drill that hole all the way through. Remove the coins, and then I can take my knob and screw it in position. Now this works real well whether you're using one knob like I'm doing here, or if you are using two knobs on the drawer. It works exactly the same way, because this gets the alignment both left and right, top and bottom, exactly right. Now because I'm using only one knob, it will rotate, but that's okay. That is not really a big issue because once I have the knob in place, I can go ahead and close the drawer, reset the alignment, 
and all I need to be able to do is just adjust it where it's rotating around that knob. And then from there, just carefully pull it out and I'll put a temporary clamp in position. Now realize this clamp will hold it in place. If I had two knobs instead of the one, I really wouldn't even need this clamp. But having the clamp in place as well as the knob makes it where now I can go ahead and attach and screw in those four screws. Now to me, this way of attaching the face of the drawer is very, very easy to be able to do. And to me, it works a lot better than trying to use double stick tape and other methods that I've seen. This method holds it mechanically in place by having the knob screwed into position. The clamp here only prevents it from rotating. Again, if I had two knobs, wouldn't even need the clamp. So how does it look? If you look across the top of this, you can see that that spacing is exactly the same. Same way with the sides. It worked out absolutely perfect. Oh, and by the way, yes, we did change the design again, and there's only one drawer instead of two. Well, here's the completed back to school station. I think this is gonna be great for the kids, as well as the parents having everything in one place. The only thing that's left now is to figure out what color to make this. So if you've got some suggestions, leave me a comment down below to what color to paint it. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.